Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Ilona from Bizpreneur. This evening, I have Precious Mulane, who's going to be our guest for our, I think it's the fourth episode of the Happy Hour for Entrepreneurs. Just to recap, um, our first episode, we spoke about mental wellness and how to look after yourself during this time of lockdown and COVID-19. In our second episode, we had um, Debbie Matake and Claudia Kanfer, and they were uh, established entrepreneurs who shared how they shifted their strategies and pivoted their businesses to suit the, the, the new environment. And last week, we had advocate Lulu Macapella, who spoke about the risks associated with the undeniable use of technology. And today we're going to speak about money. I think everybody, when they go into entrepreneurship, money, money, money is the thing that we, you know, we're thinking about. Um, sometimes money makes people a little bit sad, but Precious has said, uh, we're going to have fun because it's a happy hour. <laughs> um, Precious is a CA and an RA, and she's a published author. I have one of her books, the handbook, finance handbook for entrepreneurs and we'll share later how you can get the book but we're going to have a conversation um, about how entrepreneurs and everybody else can make and keep money during this time but before we get there a uh, special welcome to all our entrepreneurs especially the program the TUT Center for Entrepreneurship Development. Uh, this premier is partnering with the various coaches on the program to give um, some insights. So Precious is one of the mentors on the program and today she will share. So Precious, introduction. Oh, uh, I hate introductions. I know. Of course, it feels like you're bragging. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I want to I wanna say things uh, to you entrepreneurs that I'm uh, that is that is really coming from the heart. So I can't wait for us to start. So a little bit background about myself. Uh, as uh, Elena has said, my name is Precious. Um, by profession, I'm an accountant. Uh, I also an auditor, um, and I have built my business on the principle that I've learned in business schools. But let me say this: the things that really taught me life. Uh, and how business works and run was my own experience in my business. And uh, which are generally none of the stuff was covered during my years in business school. <laughs> and I stay in this business school for a very long time. Uh, and yeah, so I will be sharing those with you. Uh, Elena, thank you for inviting me and thank you to our um, uh, sponsor, TUT. Uh, we really appreciate this. And we have been in this journey for some time. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, in addition to what I do, I also develop products. I find a problem and develop products and stuff. Okay. So we recently launched a, a business administration product that we're hoping people are gonna start saying that no admin is nightmare no admin is not nightmare admin is management <laughs> so and i also do sit on boards about 12 entities uh, right now which i chair six of them uh is uh, in terms of governance audit risk uh oh and the recent uh, position I got was ethics. Uh, I've okay. never done it. So <laughs> I've never done ethics. I've always done auditing. So I got this one, and it's just like ethics. I'm like, oh no, what the heck do they do? <laughs> and I'm just so grateful that I've been in the profession, in the accounting uh, profession, for such a long time that people will end up trusting more of you because you are present, you're mm -hmm. always there, and you apply yourself. So I, I will teach you one of those things and share my experience. And Lana, thank you for the invite again. Uh, thank you very much. So like I said, we're going to have a conversation. There are some specific questions that the entrepreneurs had sent through um, because like we said, money is a, a big topic. I don't remember. I think you, you did a full day lecture um, when we were with them face to face. Your finance presentations were quite long and detailed, but they still have questions because business is dynamic and it's a journey. So um, just as a conversation starter, 
Uh, I'll start off with the question which is on everybody's mouth that you know what um, our customers spending habits have changed everybody's like tightening their belts things are expensive some things that be, have become luxury so how how do we manage our own finances since our income sources have come kind of dried up at this time so yeah okay so i think first we need to deal with the issue of saying that uh they have dried up we need to figure out how to earn the money so that we don't worry about reducing the cost uh <laughs> so much <laughs> because some of the costs that we are incurring or that we have are the costs that we can't do anything about you still have to pay the rent the landlord is still expecting yes. to pay the rent <laughs> And the majority of the expense is also food. You, actually, you're going to eat more when you're at home versus when you're not at home. <laughs> so yes. really, it's really difficult to change your spending patterns when you are. So you have to look at this holistic. You're going to start looking and saying, OK, how do I earn money? And if I'm earning money at this time, based on what is happening, what are the things that I need to do? So. Yeah. But before we do that, let's just go back a little bit. You see, a person who is struggling uh, with uh, finances, they just not earning enough to pay yeah. their expenses. Number yes. two, uh, within that their expenses or their standard of living is not aligned to their earnings. They are just spending too much. <laughs> And that's a bottom part, right? That's a bottom line. <laughs> you just spend mm. way too much. So what we need them to be thinking about is that what do I need to do to earn more? What do I need to do to then reduce the expenses so that at some point I am meeting my obligations to pay whoever that I need to pay? Yeah. But there is another part, which is the root cause of this problem. <laughs> they just don't have assets that are generating revenues. Yeah. Or the assets they have are actually not generating revenues. Or they don't have any. Um, and that is the sad part, that we build our lives as entrepreneurs from hand to mouth and never once think about rainy days like this. Yeah, we, never save up, we never build up an asset because it's only an asset that generates revenues. So if you have been generating the money and chowing all of it, you then these times are your worst nightmares because you're not gonna be going somewhere to pick up additional some so, so, to to try to figure out things because basically you um you're no longer earning enough now there's that is dried up but you're still feeling the pressure on your expenses and yeah, most of the expenses you can't touch so that is basically the main problem so I think the reason why I wanted to to go back to the real root of problem is because we sometimes we experience symptoms the result of our actions but we need to understand where does that come from yeah yeah so and then maybe from that question and say okay how do i then end the money because right now uh yes i don't have any asset yes i have my expenses high pressures what the heck yeah. <laughs> i'm still stuck with the problem so I think you, you have to understand that money is not some, uh, some papers that are some white person is sitting with somewhere stashed in. It's, mm -hmm. That's not money. Money is an energy of your service. Money is the contribution you make. Money is the value that you bring into the business or into the marketplace and the marketplace will tell you how they're gonna pay you you don't determine the price the, the price. marketplace <laughs> tells you whether that product or offering is worth the money you're asking for yeah and 
it's, money therefore is just an exchange. You solve the problem, I, I get, get the money. Yeah. I, I solve the, money, the problem, you then get paid. And most entrepreneurs um, are not thinking about that. They are not thinking about which problem I can take away during this shutdown that I can actually uh, get an exchange for it because someone is looking for this solution. We are not thinking about it. We're just thinking about our old businesses that we, we were doing before COVID. We are stuck. Yeah. And if you're thinking that way, you're going to have to let go of the business before COVID for you to be open to new opportunities. New and, ones. <laughs> and I promise you, guys, there is more than 100 million ideas of business right now. I am like, I don't know. I'm like feeling like there's just not enough time. You were saying, Ella, Elena, that Precious, we can't get hold of you. <laughs> You're just so busy. Yes. I'm so busy because I'm like, <laughs> what happened to the time? Almost 100 and something odd days. I can't, and, and I'm feeling like, for heaven's sake, I should have launched a, a new business every week, every month. I'm launching a new business because there's thousands of ideas that I'm like, oh, that's, that's a business to start. That's a business to start. Yeah, yeah. For you to grow, you got to have to let go of what you thought and learn to unlearn. Because that's another thing. Definitely. You are stuck because you are not learning. So, and I think when you have found that problem, make sure... It's a problem that people are willing to pay for. Make sure that you are very clear on how much is your cost and the value you are bringing. Hey, yeah. guys, I, I don't want to move on on this point. When I started my business, I honestly was at the mess of whoever was saying, Precious, come. I think I was <laughs> so desperate for a customer. When I, I got a yes, I just somehow didn't even care how much they were paying me. When you are not charging your value, your, your value that you deserve, the market undermines the, the problem, the, 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 the solution that you are providing. Definitely, yeah. The product that you're providing. So you gotta need to make sure when you're positioning your product, you position into the right customer, who's willing to pay for it. And the one that is not willing to pay for it may not be the right customer. Yeah, not may everyone's not your customer. <laughs> because not everyone is your customer. Be at the position of saying that, yes, as desperate as I am at this point, um, if someone is offering me this, because I've got time, okay, I will do it, but ask more. So for example, you will say something like, okay, please do me a testimonial. Please give me three or four or five friends that you think will actually enjoy this. And, and so go and go and push for more strategies or ideas like that with an aim of, yes, I might have undercharged, but that person is giving me four more five potential customers. That's and, 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 definitely, yeah. yeah. So, and that is how you will then leverage and then ask them for a written testimonial. And if they don't know how to do that, draft it for them and send them <laughs> to put it on the letterhead. Because uh, yes, <laughs> yes. yeah. you need it more. Absolutely. Just make sure also when you have found that problem, solve the root cause. And some mm -hmm. of us, you know, we, we don't solve the root cause on the solution and product that we are offering. So um, how can I say this in, in the most simplest way? So, um, hmm, a, a, a root cause will be uh, it's, it's something like this. Maybe you want to solve um, a, a teenage pregnancy. That's, mm -hmm. that's a problem you want to solve. I'm making that as a, as a generic one. Um, and then you then say, okay, um, girl, child, understand when you meet a boy, this is what happens and stuff like that. <laughs> and you go to a boy, uh, a child and say, boy, child, when you meet with a girl, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, that is not solving the root cause. The actual problem. Yes. The actual problem. The root cause is that 
the 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 girl child feels they need someone who's paying attention to them and the boy child is so admiring because they themselves are also looking for attention. So what are the structures that we can build in our society so that we don't have children that look for uh, their, uh, 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 for other children, for support and systems. Maybe we can yeah. maybe have a group sessions for girls. Maybe we can have more activity for girls, which maybe could be drama or could be poetry or whatever. So, because yeah. that now gets to solve the root cause. It doesn't solve the symptoms because a child that is pregnant is just a symptom uh, of the problem. There is, a, there is more underlining. And I'm making that example because it's generic. Uh, so I am saying, when you are also providing for a solution, get to the root cause and how you get to the root cause you say why 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 at least minimum five times with an aim that at some point you will come up with different reasons and those reasons are still the symptoms but they will help you when you solve the problem you're solving all those symptoms and you're solving it's broader so <laughs> and yeah you you're solving holistic you you're solving the problem holistic at the core of its roots that is why it's called the root cause yes yes so um, I, I like that you brought that um, a lot of our money problems start with how we think and how we learn. Um, so that's, that's a key takeaway for me so far. Um, I remember you mentioned this as well to the entrepreneurs that we need to change our thinking if we want to change our financial habits here. Yeah. So um, how do we um, start with this earning money? Where do we can the entrepreneur that feels stuck because of lockdown? Where can they start? <laughs> so we we are what we think about. Okay. So if you think I'm incapacitated, I don't know what, what the heck to do with myself, mm -hmm. then the world is gonna give you exactly that. Yeah, yeah. If you feel I'm resourceful. I'm, I'm on my way to find the solution. And these solutions are the solutions that are gonna help people. You're not gonna also give up because you're just not doing it for yourself only, but you're also doing for the person whom we are solving the problem for. Yes, yeah, I think the other thing also that we generally don't do as entrepreneurs, we don't solve our own problems. We're trying to solve somebody else's problem. Mm -hmm. Start looking at your own problem right now and say, what can I do to move towards solving this problem towards me having? So I mentioned the problems earlier when I was saying uh, the, the main root cause of your problem of not earning is because you don't have assets that are generating what? Income. Income, yeah. Then start asking yourself, what type of assets can I actually get my hands on right now with the leak that I've got, whatever that I've got? And time right now is something that is very available. But yes. what, can you build? what can you build during that time? Remember, assets is shares, assets is real estate, assets is you, <laughs> assets is businesses. Yeah. So look at those and say, you know what? I don't have a home maybe right now. I'm renting this landlord who keep on coming. Maybe because I have some data, let me figure out how to build my own home. When this lockdown is up, I should have figured out how to get my own home. Then I will never have a landlord. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could say, you know what? Right now, shares are crashing. Maybe I had a 1,000 rand or 500 rand. Let me just buy it on some of the cheap shares right now uh, yeah. in this industry, because I know these industries, they will take off at some point or whatever case, or the, the, the assets that are in those businesses uh, will actually generate revenues or whatever. Or maybe, you know what? I finally need to learn a skill that does not depend on some politician. Maybe I need to learn to train. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> I need to learn uh, to understand Forex uh, trading. I need to uh, understand trading on shares. Maybe I need to understand how to buy businesses. 
how to value businesses. Guys, one of my businesses that I'm actually have been, I launched it last year, but I, I never took off because I didn't find time, was domain assets, domain ah. assets of buying uh, websites and build yeah. them up, get traffic, resell them, rent them out. That does not need a brain. <laughs> it just, you know, something <laughs> as easy as that. Um, yeah. And, 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 and the, more, the more you think about what you need to do, it, it, so your contribution to the society, whatever environment you are in, is limited to your thinking. If you are thinking in a box, you will then be limited by the ideas of what is possible. Guys, yeah. to get a domain, it's almost like, it's, it, it, I think the price range from $5 to $15. I mean, yeah. that is practically nothing to get a website for the domain. Um, and choosing the right domain, there's softwares and stuff and systems that I will be sharing some of those things. Buying shares, it doesn't take a lot of money. Um, you can open an account at Standard Bank um, and some other platforms are even not charging anything for you to open in a trade. Sorry, you've gone mute. Oh, sorry. Okay. I don't yeah. know. So it's just not about, I don't have money. No, no, no. You are not thinking in the resourceful manner because you have not been investing in yourself. We you are letting the world detect to you whether you are worth or not worth. You are letting the world detect to you what is what you can do, what you cannot do. We are letting yeah. the environment detect. You are watching way too much news. Oh, yes <laughs> and it's so discouraging because then when you come out of those news you're depressed you think oh we're all gonna die from corona and da -da -da. the whole lot of stories that you're telling yourself you're gonna start waking up in the morning every day and saying thank god the sun is up i'm giving another opportunity to leave my landlord has not chased my clothes out that's an opportunity for me to then worried about the things that are could happen or that are yeah. going to happen tomorrow focus on today have you been productive one of the reasons why i'm always busy is because i don't let my email detect to me my plan for the day <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise you I, it's, I, I don't work according to even the clients that want me to do certain things uh -uh. I work according to what was my plan. So whether the client has come through, has not come through, that is none of my business. You focus on doing your part and being productive, productive and contributing to the society and stop worrying about money. You see, when you're really contributing to a society, you don't worry about money. Money solves it as long as you know that was your best value, that was the best solution for what you are solving, the clients will come to you. You don't worry about man. You gotta need to do your part. You're gonna be the person who's worth the money you're asking for. Which is another thing. Most entrepreneurs are not worth the cent they're asking for. Yes. Because their yes. heart is not in it. They just doing it. Just for the sake, they're just doing it. You're yeah. gonna be in no. it and understand that everything that you do is pure energy. And if that energy is by the way, the money also will say, hey, by the way. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I like what you're saying. Um, our mindset is very important and productivity as well. So if, if we spend the day watching all the dreadful things around us and feeling depressed, that's exactly what the bank account is going to look like because there hasn't been much effort from, from our side. Yeah to contribute to contribute yes. to solve the problem uh, and helping more people as much as you can and one thing for sure this uh coronavirus is provided we can help as many as far as it goes to cairo to the us to wherever i mean yeah. the last webinar we had we had even had someone from zimbabwe the other time we had someone from thailand um yeah. how do they get our stuff no idea <laughs> Your reach is, is wider. <laughs> so you can help as many. And that is why as entrepreneur, you gotta need to start really narrowing down the problem you're solving. Make sure, yes, your solution solve the problem holistic, but you are very niche in your solution. You don't 
try to be everything to everybody. You're focusing very much in very narrow uh, approach. So where mm -hmm. to start uh, was, your, was your main question. You have to unlearn. Have to unlearn what you have learned before COVID. <laughs> okay. Unlearn <laughs> that. Forget it. It doesn't work. The principles that worked before are not going to work now or post COVID. Two, contribute more. Add more value to the market. Give yourself to the vision, to the problem. They should not know your name, Olona, but they should know what you do. The your name is, is not important. <laughs> but what you do, yeah. you know, they're going to say, oh, that, that girl, that girl that did this. Yeah. That, you've got them but when they don't know your name, but they know what you do because they will search for you. Yeah. Third one learn every day every day if if there was any time to learn is right now guys mm -hmm. learn and remove all the music and videos of funny things on tiktok <laughs> and all that uh, being funny is not the right time to be this is not a time to be funny this is not time to be entertained this is the time to learn this is the time for education real education which is self-education so yeah. every day. so in the morning, take one hour learning a specific area in, in the area that you want to develop and grow in, in the after, afternoon, because your brain will be tired, listen to something that is inspiring, that is giving you more. And as you go to sleep, think about your ideas and things when they are prosperous. Please watch for okay. that. When they are prosperous, don't look at it as dull as they look now when the, the checklist maybe did not get ticked on the to-do. No, no, no. Look mm. at it as you go to sleep. You're seeing yourself being successful, having done it, and you have, you've passed through it, and you're now earning your money. And being grateful yeah. that the money is in the bank account. Being grateful that you have solved someone's problem. And that person is going to somebody else to say, hey, Elena did this for me. Exactly. It speaks for you. Yeah. <laughs> So I think uh, sometimes when we are introducing these uh, ideas and things, people think, you no, know, maybe we read it somewhere. So I'd like to just to share a little bit of my story. So I'm sharing this to you because at one point in between 2003 and 2012, I actually was struggling. I was adding all this value, uh, doing quite a lot of things but I was just not getting the amount or the worth that I actually deserve. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking very hard to myself, really, should I be doing this? Why do I, why do I like to torture myself so much? I could just go to corporate and you know, just get it over and done with. I think also I got so discouraged because I realized that entrepreneurship was for rejects. South African rejects in relation to is people who can't find jobs. And Definitely, that's the perception, yeah. And it's not because, and I was like, for heaven's sake, and I, it was so painful going through that process. I, 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 I just didn't know what to do and how to actually deal with this. And lucky enough, I've always been a student. Um, I've always been a student. When I was stuck, uh, there were some programs that were run by Success Resources. Uh, mm -hmm. Success Resources is almost like a, a academic uh, a, a academy of uh, real practice business kind of thing. Okay, they, not business. They got, uh, international speakers and coaches and mentors who are now my mentors. And um, when I realized that the reason why I was not getting through this was also because of me. You okay. see, at heart, I'm a social entrepreneur. And I could actually be asked, last week actually I got asked, Precious, you're going to talk. How much are you going to charge us? Do you know that I said, no, I'm not going to charge? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I honestly, I think it's also how we were raised, guys, how we are raised, also, we take that to our boardroom, we take that to our businesses. 
you would then end up not doing things in the right way. I should have charged. Last week, I should have charged. Um, I didn't. But the bottom line was, I need to work on myself. So personal development was the most important thing. So okay. if maybe there's anything that I, I am going to tell you, you are not earning what you are worth because you have not grown to the level of the, wealth, of the money that you are looking for. Definitely. So growing the entrepreneur as a person is yes. important for earning. Okay. Yes, because you're the one who makes decisions. Yes. Crappy decisions lead to <laughs> crappy bank account. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Let's that say that much. again. <laughs> crappy decisions <laughs> lead to crappy bank account. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's your decision making that will earn you money it's your decision making that will help you to keep the money mm -hmm. and decision making is influence how matured you are as a person that is why personal development has to be a priority yeah so but what did i learn from that experience one the knowledge that i had had no value it was obsolete the fact that mm -hmm. i was a ca and a registered auditor with so much experience in the market i was in it meant nothing. Mm -hmm. Two, the degrees that I have were, were, were not guaranteeing that I will earn the living I was mm -hmm. looking for. Okay. And that is also because the degrees that I have are worth more on corporate than on entrepreneurship. In, in entrepreneurship, you don't need a degree to be successful. Yeah. And actually, coming to think of it, the degree will stop you from being successful in entrepreneurship. <laughs> and then I also realized what I learned from that process was that I have to claim my worth, my value, and not be shy that my rate per hour is 3,500. And if someone is offering me something less, there must be something more than just my rate. Yes. I contribute to the market. I solve problems and I'm good at what I do. Yeah. And I also realized that I had thought these degrees that were obsolete, these experiences that I've had in corporate were going to be of a value to the market. No, what was really of a value were my experiences of what I am experiencing in my journey as an entrepreneurship. As an entrepreneur, yeah. Of really. Not what I had learned in corporate, not what I had understood in my books and I practiced, and, and that meant nothing. I was talking above my target market. My target market could not connect with me because most of them have never been open a finance book. By the way, when yeah. they're watching the news, they will watch all the crap on the news. And the last part they're supposed to be listening, they, they switch it off to something, to another news, <laughs> which is crappy stuff. The finance the news. They don't even yeah. listen to that. Mm. And therefore, uh, that is how I, I, I build up the value. So okay, is, so we have a few comments just to 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 give you some insight. Our audience is 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 joining with us. Okay. Um, so we have somebody who says learning to unlearn. That's a, a great term. Uh, Tendai says, "I love the energy in this interview. Uh, thank you for being with us." Um, Lulu speaks about that forex trading is one of the things she would like more practical skills on. Um, so advice on practical steps on some of the examples that you gave, or maybe a resource where they can look at it. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's our comments for now. I'll keep reading them. Perfect. Okay. So um, as for foreign uh, trade, my suggestion for you is that don't sign up for any program. Okay. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't sign up for any program. Just rather learn which industry you think post-COVID will actually really drive or during COVID are actually going to be uh, thriving. Uh, because what you have to understand is that for the next 12, what, 12 to 18 months to another three years, 
we will really be struggling to go back to the norm, the original norm. So ask yourself in the next three years, which organization, look at what Warren Buffett is buying, which industry is he looking at? Uh, look, look at people, look at the top traders in the world and that information you can Google. Top traders, what are they buying right now? <laughs> so we don't need a course for that. No, people think you need a course for everything. You don't need a course. You just need to model the person who has mastered that. Okay, okay. Model the so, person that's mastered it. That has mastered that. And I'm saying in top of my list, when you talk about Shane, Warren Buffett is my number one. <laughs> what okay. is he buying right now? Which industries is he buying? What do those mm -hmm. companies that is buying? And all this information is a public information. Yeah. And once yeah. we have selected those, start learning that industry so that you can really get into it and understand it more and start seeing other businesses that are in that similar space, but also start asking which other industries so that you can diversify. Okay, so diversify. Um, I suppose this can fall under the learn something every day um, yes. that we spoke Absolutely. about in the beginning. Yes, yes. So, Stop following, uh, I don't know what you guys follow, the musicians and all that. Start following the traders, the best okay. traders in the world. Yeah, in the, those who are doing Dow Jones, those are in New York, uh, Singapore, because there's an Asia market, there's an American market. So you can actually join and see who are the best traders within that and have a look and start monitoring the, the, the trade, understanding the trade, what influences the trade. Um, I'm not asking you to be a trader. I'm asking you to tap it into other people's wealth of knowledge and know-how for you to then see how you can build. Look right now at the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Right about, um, I think two weeks ago, the president was talking about a project that are going to be launched in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And he went on and mentioned in this project, you're going to need to start analyzing which which industries are going to be affected by those pr projects and mm. who are the people that are number one in those kind of projects because it might just mean maybe you need to think about maybe i need to buy shares from those companies from those, that are building yeah. that type so just just get your mind just play some part in the market and stop being passive and um letting the whole world to take over around you be the yeah. one who active because that is what's gonna earn you money. Now, uh, there was also another question on... Um, Let me was, see if I get back to them. Um, it was comments, Learn to, oh. learning to unlearn. It's a, it's oh, a great okay. term. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So what do you need to change? What do you know, what do you need to, to what did I change? Uh, in my lessons. So taking that case study that I had, what did I learn? But what did I need to change? Guys, yeah. you are not learning if you're not changing. Yeah. You are not learning if you're not changing. So as much as I learned those five lessons that I shared with you earlier, there were certain things that I needed to change. One of the things that I changed, I was offering my product to entrepreneurs. I stopped offering my products and service to entrepreneurs. Okay. And the reason why I stopped is because I was talking above them. Okay. They were not okay. my, they were not on the same league. Hmm. You can't sell below your, your, you can't sell below your LSM. You can't stay FOAs. Ebese ut uzoya a deep slut to sell. Okay. A person who has a deep slut is gonna see you as a rainfall and ask for discounts because we're not also right. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. You cannot sell below your LSM. When you are selling below LSM, sell a product or service that does not need any human intervention from your part okay so a product, product that, ha that is hands-free that is few really hands-free and for me that was the book that we we're showing in the essential okay funding. i must maybe show it again in case <laughs> you know. so, so that's a book for entrepreneurs <laughs>
that was the that was the product that I said, you know what, I've been repeating myself over and over on the same issue. Writing a book will help my message to go a long way. It's cheaper. Okay, the person can actually be able to buy and take. And half of the time, they don't even buy, by the way. It gets given to them. <laughs> mm, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but somebody has paid. Somebody has paid. Okay. So I, change, I didn't change the product. I changed the target market. Okay. Okay. I was still offering the same. But guess what? I increased my product, my price, three times. And you're selling. <laughs> On my selling. Mm. I, because before I was selling to the wrong person as much as they needed my solution, but they didn't know my word. Okay. They, they didn't understand me when I was saying to them, you know what, you don't under, the, the, the reason why we are struggling in here is because of they, they will think of it as though it's a theory. Whereas if I'm talking mm -hmm. to another CEO or another CFO, a supply development in, incubator manager, and I'm explaining mm -hmm. this thing, they're gonna get. So you're gonna need to choose a target market that is closer to your level. Yes. In terms of education, in terms of your, your, your LSM, in terms of your articulation and your understanding. Stop yeah. chasing people that are below your value. So you basically um, found those in your LSM who had common interests in helping entrepreneurs and your book yes. sold. Okay, that's yes. a great model. <laughs> Trust me, it was from a very long time struggling with this because, you know, I knew deep down in my heart, uh, Elena, that God had called me to this. I'm supposed to be teaching. I'm supposed to be uh, a, a, a teacher. I just had not figured out how can I build my message to that level. I now get paid to do that. But because yes. I had to stop focusing on trying to convince the entrepreneur, come and attend my sessions, I, I, I stop convincing them. So when I offer to them, it's free, but somebody else behind this green That's wall crazy. has paid for it. Because <laughs> they <green> know, <laughs> they have paid for it because they know what I'm bringing to the market is really of a value. You yes. cannot sell to someone who does not understand your value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The customer has to know your value. And awesome. I was no longer being apologetic also about my work. And I also sold my, the business that was not making money for me. And I, I did let it go. And that, that, that is what I needed to change. Okay. I, the last one that I want to share, which I think is the most important um, thing, is that I realized that I had to forgive myself. Okay. Forgive myself of having made this biggest mistake that had led me to have 36 rand 97 cent in my bank account and running a business that owed me almost like, I think it was about 2.1 million. Okay. And that business was worth nothing. You have to forgive yourself when you realize you've made a mistake. That is why saying I'm sorry to yourself is good in the mirror because you let to let go all those emotions. But I also started to every day invest on myself, every day keep my energy up, every day keep my motivation high because I realized my productivity, when it kept on doing this, my bank account also did that. Yes. <laughs> when there's a day you wake up, you're not feeling so good and then you go to sleep like, oh no gonna go through this and then the it's other day with yeah, you. Yeah. i'm gonna do this then the other day oh lord who is this gonna end i i, I mean the past uh, two years i am guys i want you to understand i'm not saying that i don't have days that you just like no lord i, I can't wake up not today, today. No. <laughs> not today i do have those days but those days away like like 90 percent of than previously yeah i yeah. am now every day so motivated about what i do what i, I mean I, I am not even during COVID. 
the first week was most unproductive week for me. I was like, I didn't know what to do with myself. I got depressed and said, oh my goodness, what about this contract? What about this? Because I'm in training, right? <laughs> you, yeah. we, we had, we had and it's context. <laughs> exactly. So, yes. and, but the moment I pulled on my tools, the moment I pulled in my mentors and coaches that I know are in the same space and started looking at what they are doing, I then started saying, actually, I should come up with two books after this. Actually, I should okay. come up with two more products that I've been packing aside and not launching them. And, and, and. So it's, it's just your attitude. You just, and, and every day, I mean, I have, when there are days where I feel down, I feel low, I know who to listen to. When I feel little Definitely, bit, yeah. And that, that is what you need to do as an entrepreneur. You need to have a, a, a box of toolbox of every little problem and have a mentor for every little problem that you have so that you tap into what they do when they have that. What do they do when they have that? And because yeah. being in entrepreneurship, being in life, it, you do, it didn't come with a book of life. We, we learn life. But you know, there's something that in Sizulu we call in Lela Ifundo Agaba Pambi. Yeah. You know, that the Lesos show basically is saying that you learn from the people that are ahead of you. We as entrepreneurs, we don't have that attitude. We want to start things on our own. Let me say this. The problems you're trying to solve have already been solved 10,000 times by someone somewhere else in the world. You don't need to be alone in solving that. You just need to find the person who's solving that problem and start modeling what they are doing and then yeah. um, uh, uh, change it to your environment to suit you and your environment and your customers. Awesome. So Precious, you've touched on us being intentional in, in, in investing in yourself, the, the foundation of the business. I'm worried we're going to run out of time before we speak about keeping the money. <laughs> but oh, I think it's very important. They are exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> they are okay. exactly the same. Because, I, I, and that is why maybe I take quite a long time on earning because I, all, I always felt that as black people, we have been taught to be stingy. Uh, we have been taught to spend as little as, no. You see, when you are rich, you don't worry about the spending. You see, okay. when you have earned enough, you're not going to worry about, oh, no, maybe I need to buy that. No, 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 no. no. Okay. I think that is another uh, uh, approach that I want entrepreneurs to be thinking abundance. Don't think in limitation. Mm. Think in abundance. I think because we think in abundance, we then do not worry because where we're spending the money, we're spending the money on the areas that are worth because we know our worth. You see, when you have worked for something, you will watch where you spend it. But when you have not worked for it hard enough, you will spend it recklessly. Okay, okay. <laughs> because you don't know your worth, you don't know the value. So that is why I'm saying the principle are exactly the same. So yeah. someone said to me, Precious, but then um, what about the things that people talk about, budgets, da 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 and all those things we use as principle to 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 manage or to keep the money the finances of, yeah of course budget is important it's very important but you see the way budget was taught to most people it was taught as a restriction so the moment they hear the word budget their man shut down or it mm -mm. <laughs> you know <laughs> that's not <laughs> that's not <laughs> Whereas budget is the plan on how your abundance and your earning is going to actually be spent. It's a plan. Awesome. From a space of abundance. Yeah. From, that's why from the space. So that, so yes, you're going to keep the money. When you have earned it, you're going to keep the money because you're going to start learning that the only way to build the wealth, to build the assets that we spoke about, that we said you don't have right now, mm. is by making sure that Every time when you earn whatever that you have earned, the 10% of that get reinvested on an asset. Okay. okay. From today, you never spend the 100 rand that you got. That 100 rand that you got, you're going to take a 10 rand of it and you're going to invest it 
reinvest it on yeah, those right. assets that I mentioned to you. Okay. And you're going to make that to be your habit and start increasing it every time when there's an opportunity for you to increase. And mm -hmm. that is what we call pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. Okay. I like and that. <laughs> the <stains. laughs> I promise you, when you start living that, ooh, it's almost like the, the, the door of heaven in money just opens up. Okay. Because what happens is that ability to pay yourself and reward yourself is one also of the things that are going to motivate you to go on because you can see some more. Remember, when you pay, when you, you earn the money, 100 rand, and then you use that 100 rand, you are working for somebody else. You are paying somebody else. <laughs> And so you're sweating, paying others. Yes, yes. You're definitely. paying others, but you're not paying yourself. And that is a slavery, guys. That is slavery at its core. Yeah. So um, you've spoken about um, rising up after feeling like everything's done. You had 36 grand in your bank account. I'm sure a lot of people are feeling like my store is closed. The restrictions have said I can't work and I can't function. Lulu is asking, what about those people who are still stuck because of restrictions? How can they start to think about rising on a financial perspective because they, they feel like their hands are tied at the moment? Okay, so I, I, I think Lulu is because you're still thinking the, the world is the same as before COVID. So, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you have to move from that state of mind. You're going to need to really understand and understand that it also means the lockdown has to start happening from here, from your okay. brain first. For the lockdown and for you to be productive, for you to contribute, it's not going to be just what the politicians or the government is saying you are not you are not to do this and you can't look at that as the only negative yeah you're gonna start looking at COVID and say what is COVID gonna do for me what is it that i can do that i would have not done if it was not locked down one you have more time for heaven's sake that's the most valuable asset in your life what can you do with that time? You're no longer going to be stuck in traffic. You're not going to be stuck in some meeting with people you don't like who are gonna, not going to buy. You know, <laughs> start thinking what if you were in retail? Ask yourself, is there a way I can set up a, a store, get a, a list of my customers, follow up with them if I can deliver for them? Okay. You are stuck because you are not thinking. You are looking at the lockdown as there is nothing in the world that has only have a downside. Everything in the world has both the up and the down. Stop focusing on what lockdown has presented the restriction on. Focus on what opportunities the lockdown is presenting to you because that you can do something about. The other part, you can't do anything, not unless you wanna go to jail. <laughs> yes, so our, our, the way we think, is really the beginning of, of what the next steps will be. So if I'm sitting thinking I'm stuck, that door cannot be open, I'm not going to get up and try. So she's spoken about the daily habits that we have, the mindset that we have, and also perhaps our relationship with failure. So what would you say about fa people who feel they failed financially? What, what can they do at this stage? I, I, one, a person who feels, you know what, I, I should have done this, I should, and there's a lot of guilt, start with that forgiveness. Okay. Start with that forgiveness. Even, you know, I, 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 I said to, to another group the other day that, you know what, when I realize, when I let go of that two million, when I let go of my mistakes of having led myself to that situation and took 100% responsibility and stop blaming everyone, about that problem. I saw myself as being the main contributor into that problem. I think okay. that was a first realization for me. 
And that's yeah. another thing. You have to learn to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for having not done, made the right decision and done the right things. Yes. That you knew were right. Your conscience was telling you, the universe was telling you there were signs that you were not doing well. I said the same thing with other entrepreneurs where I said, guys, you were broke before COVID. Stop complaining that because COVID of COVID. Is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's check you. Let's check your financial statement before COVID. And that is why all the funds are saying, show us your financial statement on the 28th of February. <laughs> That's a tricky one now. <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> so there's nothing new. There's um, nothing new. <laughs> yeah, perhaps the lockdown has almost uh, highlighted what was already there. The yes. habits so, that we already had. You see what the lockdown has done, Elona? It has, uh, it has I, I, I kind of feel COVID is providing an opportunity to to level up the play field for everyone yeah uh to break down the walls of uh economic structures in south africa that uh were, were designed before uh apartheid after apartheid all that it's, mm -hmm. it's just breaking it down into pieces and yeah. only those who know who they are in the market and the value they bring into the market are gonna thrive Yes, yes. And when, when opportunities come, if your mind is not looking out for opportunities, they will pass you by. You will still be in a space of saying, how come other people are growing? Have empty cup. You know, those people yes, who look at yes. things. Start listing down the opportunity. What has this COVID given you? What gift? And being yeah. grateful about that gift. I, I mean, as much as I was shouting at my daughter, Ella, I remember just now saying, please go out and all that. <laughs> I am grateful that I'm able to spend more time with my kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yeah. I'm not seeing the headache of helping them with homework. No, I'm just no. grateful that I'm spending more time with them. I'm grateful that I can do this. Probably I would have not been able to do this. And, and yes. there's thousands of things uh, start being grateful for what you have for god to give you more than what you actually and, and 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 when when you do that you enhance it you you take care of it you make it bigger yes um so we also have a comment that says um success does not depend on our gowns and certificates thank you for bringing that up um and also, I think that can be a motivation for that person who feels I don't have the gowns and the certificates and it means I cannot start my business. But um, we've heard this evening that it's, it's what's sitting in here and your perspective and how do you identify the opportunities. Um, so perhaps you have some last few comments from yourself. I think the last thing I would like to say is that it doesn't matter what you do, whatever that you do, just pour your heart in it. Pour every bit of it. Um, and, and do it not because you're sacrificing yourself, but do it because we, we don't know our last day. We don't know. Stop playing small. If you are doing anything, paint that thing whatever red to a point that everyone must know that's just you yeah give your heart you know on everything that you touch and do to a point it doesn't matter what it is if they say sweep the floor sweep that floor as though nobody else can sweep that to well as a point that they will say eh, eh, i don't want anybody else except her who swept on the day yeah and that yeah will earn you the value in the market because this is an economy where you get referred from one place to another. And mm -hmm. when you are doing things by the way, then you don't understand who you are and what you stand for. Stand yeah. for something. Stand for something that is bigger than you as you're building up towards that vision of yourself. Have a vision of, of the best you in your mind, in your heart, and carry that with you with your actions. Um, and build that consistently, work on it every day until you are at your best self. Yeah. There is no yeah. other life you're gonna give, life is gonna give you. This is it. There's no other life. Live it and be comfortable with who you are. 
Don't let small things stop you. Let, don't let other people, small people mind stop you. Don't let people whom you think are your friends. You might actually have to get rid of them. If yes. they are not taking you to the vision of who you want to be and what you want to do, maybe you, you don't belong in that WhatsApp group. Be willing to throw yourself all 100% in so that even if you fail, you will say, you know what? I've done all. I've did it. I did it my best of ability. So when you let go, you let go to the universe and the universe will bring back because it will have known that you had given whatever it gave takes. Your all. Yes. Given yes. To all. Yeah, that's what I would like to say. I, I'm going over time. I teach for a living, Elana. So <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I know precious about going over time, but I think um, our audience is quite happy with this. Um, so for me, one of the key takeaways, Precious speaks about uh, be mindful of your impact. Um, instead of us thinking, uh, if I'm doing half and I'm sitting at home and I can't go to the storefront, do what you can with what you have and more opportunities will come. So in terms of the, the quality of the output that we give, that speaks to our bank account as well. I think she had a statement. What did you say? Crappy thoughts equals? A crappy decision leads to crappy bank up our accounts. Yes, yes. So I think that's one of the things that we need to 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 really think about it as how am I nourishing my brain? And out of that, what quality of decisions are, am I going to produce? And what are, what is that going to do for my finances? Um, thank you so much, Precious. Um, we will be seeing you again. I'm just saying it's to the universe. <laughs> And thinking if I ask you live, then there's no room to say, um, I'm too busy, Lona. <laughs> um, in the comments, we're going to share, um, I think we've already shared the link to where to get this awesome book. I have been an entrepreneur for a couple of years, but I quite benefited from it. So I encourage everybody to get it. Um, I think you, you courier it as well, right? Yes, we do. We have a full e-commerce business there, uh, which then it get Korea to people. Thank goodness there's no restriction on lockdown there. So please place your orders. We're actually going to be running special to finalize because we are planning to produce the third edition. We're already writing the third edition. So we can't oh, yes. wait. This one's the second edition that I have. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I almost have an outdated book, guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. I promise you, the only thing that we generally update every year is the tax tables. It's also some ideas because I'm learning as I'm learning and growing as an author. That's also, amazing. I share those ideas and yes. integrate into that. Yeah. And I think it's a great time to be changing it because the, the COVID situation has thrown a lot of curveballs for a lot of people. So thank you so much for your time and for all the input you give for the entrepreneurs at the center. I've seen a lot of them have been on the live with us. Um, we will be seeing you soon. We may not be doing the contact sessions, but uh, I'm really grateful that we're able to still continue to empower them and that they are not sitting at home doing nothing. A lot of them are making moves as um, we're sitting in the lockdown. Thank I you, Precious. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Bye.